Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an exclusive, up close and personal, in depth look at the 2015 Audi RS7. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the RS7. We'll start up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, take it on a quick drive, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Flow Audi of Greensboro for allowing me the opportunity to film and providing the RS7 featured in today's in-depth review. For more information on the rest of their inventory, check out flowaudigreensboro.com. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The exterior of this RS7 is finished in the optional Daytona Gray Matte Finish, complemented nicely by an all-black perforated Valcona Premium Leather Interior. In order to start the vehicle, all you have to do is just put your foot on the brake and hit the aluminum engine start button located in the center console. This RS7 features the optional Dynamics package which, in addition to suspension upgrades, also gets a variable ratio of electromechanical steering system that progressively builds resistance as it comes off center. Through Audi's Drive Select system you can also adjust the stiffness between comfort to dynamic. It's routed through an RS specific 3 spoke perforated leather wrapped sport steering wheel that features grip bolsters up top and more subtle placements down towards the bottom. It's both comfortable to feel and pleasant to look at and features polished trim around each spoke and the airbag cover. While the S7 carries Audi's S-Tronic dual-clutch 7-speed automatic manual transmission, the RS7 receives a ZF-sourced and RS-tuned 8-speed automatic, a more robust unit that's better equipped to handle the big jump in torque. Once in drive, you can activate the transmission's sport mode, which keeps the vehicle on the power band longer by raising the shift points. For an extra dose of sport, you can also shift it manually via the gear selector or via the steering wheel mounted aluminum panel shifters. There's no launch control with the traditional torque converter design, but with all wheel drive and over 500 pound feet of torque, I can't imagine that it would make much difference. While a traditional torque converter automatic may not shift quite as fast as a dual clutch unit, the 8 speed with its closely spaced gear still shifts quite quick with a commanding authority, accompanied by red matching down shifts and a fantastic exhaust burble. Audi's Drive Select system, routed through the vehicle's MMI interface, alters various vehicle parameters such as steering weight, throttle response, and suspension stiffness relative to the driver's desire for more comfort or performance. There's even an automatic mode and an individual screen where you can customize the various vehicle systems. When you custom tailor things in the individual screen, there are seven different parameters with three different modes each, between comfort, auto, and dynamic. 
This RS7 we have here comes with the optional driver assistance package which features an adaptive cruise system that has the ability to come to a full stop in addition to pre-sense plus and active lane assist. You also have a 360 degree surround view camera system for superb ease in parking. Out back there's also adaptive guidance lines that automatically turn when you rotate the wheel. Probably one of the coolest features though is the available front night vision camera. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic adaptive LED headlamp system, rear fog lamps, and the hazards. Of course, all four windows are fully automatic. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. The A7 Sportback is still a relatively fresh model for Audi. Hitting the streets for 2012, it represented the latest entry into the so-called four-door luxury coupe segment, a philosophy set by the Mercedes CLS that blends the practicality of having four doors with the sensual curves and roofline you would see on a coupe. The following year, BMW even introduced its own entry known as the 6 Series Grand Coupe. This unique automotive category has created some fresh new models that have brought some added excitement to the luxury sedan market. For 2013, Audi introduced the S7, a higher performance version of the A7 that replaced the standard supercharged V6 with a twin turbocharged V8, giving buyers the choice of a performance machine with Audi's relatively understated looks. Now, Audi's introduced its latest all-wheel drive crown jewel known as the RS7. Like previous RS products offered in the states, such as the TT RS and the RS5, it represents the fastest and most powerful variant of the A7 lineup, with 140 horsepower and 110 pound-feet of torque more than the already impressive S7. In other words, that's 10 horsepower and 118 pound-feet of torque more than the recently refreshed R8 V10 Plus. Cars in this niche segment are largely based on the brand's mid-size offerings. Therefore, you'll find many of the underpinnings and components are derived from the A6, including engines. The RS7 uses the same compact power plant as the Euro-exclusive RS6 Avant. In general, just like the competition, the standard A7 does cost more than its A6 derivative. But what you get is an edgy, aggressive premium sedan that not only turns up the excitement from a design perspective, but it's a great representation of modern engineering and performance. The RS7 is arguably the best looking vehicle in the segment, which includes the CLS 63 AMG and M6 Grand Coupe, and perhaps the Porsche Panamera and Turbo variant. Its masculine style is low, wide, and long, featuring sleek, chiseled body lines. Audi didn't bother to design it with big bulges or puffed out panels, making the body appear quite lean and athletic. The rear, unlike the CLS and Grand Coupe, is truncated, with a sharp drop off the edge of the rear hatch. The hatch alone provides a significant practicality advantage, which we'll cover later in the video. While styling changes for the S7 weren't radically different from the A7, the RS7 turns the dial up to 11 with an aggressive RS touch. Up front, Audi's signature single-frame grille sports RS-specific black honeycomb mesh and RS badging. The lower fascia receives a more pronounced air splitter and black mesh intakes to either side that not only feed air to the brakes and other various components, but they also house the available adaptive cruise system. The rocker panels are extended out further, while the rear carries a more aggressive diffuser and large twin black oval exhaust a part of the optional sport exhaust system with built-in bypass valves. Carbon fiber and matte aluminum optic packages are also available for that extra touch of customization. Otherwise, the black optic setup is standard as we have here. With those styling upgrades, you can opt for prominent quattro lettering within the single frame grille. For 2015, the A7 lineup has received some subtle updates. In addition to restyled front lighting, one can appreciate the RS7's exclusive adaptive LED headlamps within blacked out housings. The rear lamps are new, with subtle alterations to both the front and rear fascias which sum up the exterior updates. Audi employed its modular longitudinal architecture with aluminum construction which makes up about 20% of the body in addition to the implementation of high and ultra high strength steels. It also comes standard with an RS tuned variant of Audi's Quattro all wheel drive system which normally splits the torque between 40 and 60% front and rear or the extremes of 70% of available torque at the front or 85% of it sent to the rear. 
Its torsion style center differential features a high locking rate with a separate oil cooler for better temperature regulation. In addition to a brake based torque vectoring system that places light pressure on the inside wheel and hard cornering to enhance agility. A sport rear differential contains two superposition gears which work to distribute power between each rear wheel. The stability control system can be operated in both regular and sport modes or turned off completely. Thanks to the latest generation A6's longer wheelbase, the A7 boasts a comfortable and stable ride for longer traveling over rougher roads. The RS7's front and rear independent multi-link suspensions can be had with two different setups. An electronically adjustable air suspension with adaptive dampers is standard, providing the most comfortable ride quality. Normal ride height is 0.4 inches lower than the A7, but put the car into dynamic mode and it drops an additional 0.4 inches to 20 millimeters lower in total. On the highway, the car will automatically lower to dynamic mode to reduce wind resistance. If desired, you can opt for the firmer sport suspension and dynamic ride control, replacing the standard air shocks for traditional fixed rate steel springs, paired with different three stage adaptive dampers that are synced between one another, working to reduce heave and pitch. The standard cylinder on demand system deactivates cylinders number 2, 3, 5, and 8 when cruising, allowing the car to run on four cylinders when full performance isn't needed, and thus improving fuel economy between 5 and 10%. Thanks to this, the RS7 does not come attached to a gas guzzler tax and achieves stellar best in class fuel economy. For improved downforce out back, the RS7 also features a spoiler that can be raised manually or activated automatically at speed. Standard wheels for the RS7 consists of a forged 20-inch design with three optional 21-inch wheels. This one features the optional 21-inch 5-spoke blade-style cast alloy wheels with black inserts wrapped in 275-30 high-performance Pirelli summer tires, able to hold nearly 1G in lateral cornering forces. As far as the brakes, the unique wave-style cross-drilled rotors are unique to the RS cars and measure 154 by 1.4 inches in front, paired with 6-piston calipers, and 14 by 0.85 inches in the rear with smaller single-piston sliding calipers. The calipers are finished in red when you opt for the Dynamics package. With this setup, the RS7 is able to stop from 60 miles an hour in a rather short 108 feet. The wave design shaves an additional 6.6 .6 pounds off the vehicle's weight when compared to traditional circular discs. For superior grip and fade resistance, larger 16.5 inch carbon ceramic discs are also available with anthracite calibers that shave 22 pounds off the car's weight. Overall length is 197.3 inches with a width of 75.2 inches and a height of 55.9 inches and rides on a 114.8 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight, as you see here, is around 4,453 pounds. The RS7 is powered by an all-aluminum, twin-turbocharged 4-liter V8 that packs direct injection, double overhead camshafts, and 4 valves per cylinder to yield a compression ratio of 10.1 to 1 and a red line of 6,600 RPM. Audi's compact engine design allows for a lower center of gravity. It integrates the twin scroll turbos and intercooler within the V between the cylinder banks, covered by a heat shield. Since air doesn't have to travel far, throttle response is greatly improved. With maximum turbo boost of 17.4 psi, or 1.2 bar, it pumps out 560 horsepower at 5700 rpm and 516 pound feet of torque as low as 1750 rpm. This translates to 0 to 60 times as low as 3.4 seconds while passing the quarter mile in 11.6 seconds at 123 miles an hour. On the entry level RS model, the top speed is limited to 155 miles an hour, but the Dynamics package unlocks 174 miles an hour, but adding the Dynamics Plus, which I don't know if is available in the United States, limits it to 190 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the RS7 requires the use of premium fuel and carries a 19.8 gallon tank. With the standard cylinder on demand system, EPA estimates range between an impressive 16 miles to a gallon in the city and 27 on the highway.
The RS-7 can be had in 11 different color schemes, including this Daytona gray matte effect, but inside there are two color options and patterns including RS-specific honeycomb quilted Luna silver or black leather, or the black perforated leather like you see here when equipped with the ventilated seats. You even get your choice of three decorative inlays, from standard carbon fiber to brushed aluminum and this car's layered aluminum and black wood inlay. Audi always seems to deliver an attractive and sporty interior. The RS7 turns it up a notch with unique styling and materials. Interior fit and finish is excellent with plenty of leather surfaces and solid feeling components, adding to the feeling of superb build quality. What looks like metal most likely is, and the RS7 delivers plenty of satin aluminum throughout. The doors sweep up and meet up with the shape of the dash. There's storage down below and all of your power accessories mounted on the door handle. You have two-person memory with easy exit function and power folding mirrors with blind spot monitoring. This RS7 comes with the optional multi-contour perforated leather RS Sport seats apart from the comfort seating package which features both heating and cooling functions in addition to a wide array of power adjustments and massage features. Once you activate the massage and power functions they automatically come up in the MMI system. You can adjust the intensity and location in addition to power side bolstering adjustment, 4-way power lumbar adjustment and power thigh extension. Of course, a wide variety of safety features is found throughout. And even though these seats don't have the signature honeycomb RS pattern, they still have a nice attention to detail with a little accent band that comes across the middle and a nice soft touch to them. Specific aluminum door sill plaques down below that are also illuminating, standard aluminum sport pedals and padding across the side of the center console for a comfortable place to rest your leg. All of your lighting controls located to the left, you have a power tilt telescoping steering wheel, the dash is finished with a combination of wood and aluminum inlays and finished with a black Alcantara headliner. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. And we're going to shut her up. Beautiful solid panels. The standard audio system for the RS7 includes a 14 speaker 630 watt Bose surround sound system, but featured here is the optional 15 speaker 1300 watt Bang & Olufsen advanced sound system for top notch quality. All media and entertainment is routed through Audi's updated MMI infotainment system that incorporates an 8-inch LCD high-res screen that automatically hides in the dash when not in use. It also incorporates LTE-based internet connectivity. Your Alcantara 8 pillars with side curtain airbags, grip handles up top, and Alcantara line visors with the LED accented vanity mirrors. Standard auto dimming mirror view mirror. And in the top stack here, accented by your double stitched Alcantara, you also have your three position garage home link, LED reading lamps and interior illumination, controls for your fully automatic sunroof, and some sunglass storage up front. The infotainment system is routed through the little controller stack towards the rear portion of the center console. 
with bright silver buttons corresponding to your large rotary knob, up, down, left, and right, push in to select an option, and the four quadrant buttons that correspond to the menus located in each corner of the screen. So in the main menu, the top two buttons correspond to your time and MMI setup. The controls are pretty intuitive overall. On either side, you have shortcut keys for the navigation, telephone, radio, and media, menu button, back button, and activating the vehicle's car settings. There's a little touchpad to the left-hand side of the gear selector. While it has many functions, probably the most prominent is its touchpad capabilities where you can write in commands specifically with the navigation system. When you're spelling out a destination, just write out the letters and it automatically shows up in the screen ahead of you. So beginning with tone, it's all the vehicle's audio adjustments, including the surround sound settings for the Bang & Olufsen audio system, bass, treble, and balance and fade. Now, in addition to some other features which we'll show in just a second, this new trackpad found in many of the newest Audis can also be used to adjust your balance and fade. By just dragging your finger across, you can position the sound to any particular place in the vehicle. While on this screen, you can use the little quadrant buttons to select the other options such as volume for various systems, navigation, and telephone. Accessing the radio screen brings up all the available stations. You have standard Sirius satellite radio as well as HD radio. Again, using the quadrant buttons to select the other corner options such as your presets, functions, so channels, seek, going back and forth, going between the different modes, and the radio settings, including audio adjustments and more. Media includes all of your other different options. Right now we're utilizing the CD player. You can import files to store on the jukebox, kind of like a built-in iPod with a hard drive. Various functions, same thing like you saw on the radio. Settings, and changing the source. Again, jukebox, SD card input, CD, DVD drive, iPod auxiliary integration, as well as hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio. Bringing up navigation, it also looks nice in the high-res display, it has real-time traffic updates, customizable points of interest, and more. Using the quadrant buttons, you can go between your destination, all relatively simple, route settings, information, real-time traffic updates, and settings. The RS7 also has the ability to stream a Wi-Fi connection. When you have your data plane connected, you can also bring up a terrain map with Google Maps. Of course, you can change the view mode, and more. Info just brings up your traffic updates again, your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, and it'll automatically ask you pair it if you don't already have one connected. Now there's a whole lot of detailed functions within the car menu, such as the Audi Drive Select like we talked about earlier for the various vehicle driving modes. Car systems in the bottom left, maintenance, vehicle diagnostics and service features, more detailed AC settings, driver assistance features, and personalizable options. The owner's manual is also loaded on the system in the top right hand corner, and if you want to figure out how to use any specific features, there's a lot of video tutorials that are actually pretty cool. And the display is raised when the ignition is turned on. There's also some really pleasant background music. It's actually really helpful and probably the most innovative feature demonstration setup I've ever seen in a modern vehicle. Coming down the center console, you have a little bit of black piano veneer accenting some satin aluminum bright work coming around the main screen. For us down below, you have an in-dash CD player, where if you hit this little open button right here, it brings up the SIM card input for the vehicle's Wi-Fi function and two SD card inputs. Parking sensors, raising and lowering the rear spoiler and turning off the vehicle's traction control. Down below here are the front controls for the standard quad zone electronic automatic climate control system. Three stage heat and ventilated seats for both sides, fan speed, different zones, and temperature on either side with independent automatic features. Because no matter which system you're messing with, it's all routed through the button. So if you want to adjust the fan speed, you hit the fan speed button and then rotate the wheel. If you want temperature, just push in on the wheel. Same thing goes for different zones. Press it and then switch it back and forth. Everything also shows up in the MMI screen. The center console with the beautiful aluminum accented wood, two adjustable cup holders, a little bit of storage in front of the gear selector, and a padded leather center console with two tiers. 
You have an extra power outlet, lined in velour, and your iPod interface. As far as the steering wheel, you have your driver information system located on the left-hand side, whereas you have your hands-free telephone, voice commands, and volume controls on the far right. Help. Many functions of the MMI can be operated quickly and easily with voice recognition. Voice recognition can be interrupted at any time by pressing the talk button on the steering wheel to say a Cancel. Cancel. So as you can see, it lists all the commands there and you have those video tutorials if you need a little bit more help on setting it up. The driver info system is located within the digital display in between the speedometer cluster. Using the little arrows on the left hand side of the steering column, you can go between the different modes, such as fuel, trip computer, media, telephone, and navigation. You can also bring up little sub-menus with that button there. Changing the modes. Automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. Your high beams, parking lamps, turn signal, as well as activation of the lane departure warning system. Your adaptive cruise function is located in the bottom stalk. Not to mention a heads-up display. You can raise it up and down, turn it off, and digitally shows your speed. If you like, you can also lower the screen while you're driving, but still keep the audio system going. Alrighty. We're going to shut her down. And check out the back seat. Like other vehicles in this segment, such as the Mercedes CLS and the BMW 6 Series Grand Coupe, compared to their more traditional sedan counterparts of which the vehicles are based on, the only downside on the vehicles is because of the raked roofline, you have a little bit less headroom in the back seat. Even though headroom may be a little bit tighter, you'd be impressed about how much room there actually was in the A7's back seat. And just like the front, rear seat occupants are treated in the same amount of luxury, with deeply bolstered sculpted seating, a little bit of storage tray in the middle so you can't sit five people, it's just four, one on either side. If you need extra cargo space, you can also fold down the back seats, which expand it quite nicely, and I'll show that when we get to the trunk portion. Panel fitment is nice and tight, exactly what you would expect from an Audi, given the overall interior feeling and extra dimension of solidity. As far as overall seat comfort, the A7 in general has a fantastically comfortable back seat, especially in the RS7, with unique touches like the perforated leather and more. But what really sets the vehicle apart from the competition is the fact that I think Audi included a lot more padding in their seats than the other vehicles. These seats are quite soft, especially across the backrest. You do have some noticeable bolsters across the sides, not a lot of lateral support, but it's there. They're also super soft. The bottom cushion has nice leeway, and the lower back support is also pretty good. If you're of the right height, this could be a comfortable vehicle to travel in for a longer period of time. The Alcantara headliner is also a nice addition with the double stitching as you come around. Down below, you have the independent climate control adjustments for the quad zone climate control system. Down below here, you have two 12 volt power outlets, a little storage tray in the middle here, so this is a four passenger vehicle, you can't sit somebody in the middle, and you have a padded midsection right here that offers a nice amount of storage and two cup holders. You can fold this little ski pass through here if you have some longer items like skis or something to stick up to the front, or if you have some bulkier items, you can fold down the back seat and I'll show that in just a second. Of course, there's side curtain airbags in the rear. Backseat passengers are treated with plentiful amounts of ventilation, including the air vents down below here, and a couple extra in the um, B pillars up top. You have coat hooks here, up here, grip handles, and LED reading lamps out back. So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? The biggest practicality advantage the A7 carries in general is its cargo space. It employs a hatchback design versus a typical trunk that usually limits the size of the objects you can stow. A power liftgate is standard as is rear privacy curtains. With the rear seats in place, you have around 19 cubic feet of storage space, which is pretty impressive. 
but when you fold the seats down, it expands to an amazing 49 cubic feet, pretty much able to swallow anything you throw into it. There are storage nets, as well as a well beneath the floor, cargo tie-downs, and plenty of illumination found throughout. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments that you find on the driver's seat. The glove box is locking. It has a modest amount of space as well as the vehicle's valet mode. The RS7 is an amazing blend of performance and quality considering the range between the A7, S7 and other high performing Audi models. With the unique interior styling and comfort combined with a sleek aggressive exterior, the RS7 is quite the looker with the performance to back it up. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Audi RS7. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.